the last time you just got down on the altar and just to thank you, man. Just to tell him you love him. And if we ain't careful, we, we use the altar, and the altar needs to be used. I'm telling you, folks, sometimes it'd be good just to get on your knees and say, Lord, I don't need nothing today. I just want to talk to you. Amen. 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 If you have your Bible, let's go to uh, Psalms 24. Now, this is going to be one of those messages that I throw a lot of scripture at you. Okay? So be prepared. I'm, you ain't going to have to stand for it all. Amen. Oh, a nervous look on some of y'all's face. <laughs> Psalms 24. I'm going to read the whole chapter. It's not very, very long. You get there, say amen. 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 The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, and that seek thy face, O Jacob, say like, Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, for at ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Say, Lord. Lord, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. God, we just ask your hand to be upon us right now, God. Help us, the Lord, to preach this message, Lord, right now that you've given us. God, so that your people would be encouraged tonight, God. God, I know, God, we got somebody in this building facing some things right now, Lord. They're, 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 they're going headlong into a battle, God. And, and Lord, they're, they're wondering whether you're going to be there. God, you've been there before. You, you've shown yourself faithful before, God. But, Lord, sometimes when we face trials and sometimes when we face battles, God, that seems like the strongest one that's ever come against us. But, Lord, we know what the Word says. The greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Have your way right now. We'll praise you for all you do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I want you to look at one particular verse in Psalms 24. And, and it really, this, God, God, God laid this on my heart today as I was studying it. And this was just part of my, my Bible reading this morning. And I was reading this, and it just like this, I could not get away from Psalms 24. But verse 8 is the verse that I want to kind of stop and look at, uh, at, at, at this. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. And I had all kind of titles for this, Brother Ralph. I, I, I thought about titling this weapons of mass destruction, but and, and, and the, I, the Lord just kind of set my mind on but for the blood. Yeah. But for the blood. Now, let me just kind of lay some groundwork up. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 15, verse 5, that God is a God of patience and consolation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, that God is a God of hope. The Bible says in chapter Romans chapter 15, verse 33, God is a God of peace. For 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 says, He is a God of comfort. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 says, He's a God of love. Amen. And uh, all these are true. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says, He is a God of all grace. Yeah. Amen. 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 God is all these things, but you better not miss me because you can't handle it. Right. As I was thinking about this, the Bible says uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29, For our God is a consuming fire. You don't play with God. Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 says, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Psalm, Proverbs 24 verse 8 says, Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. God usually used other nations to do his fighting. In the Old Testament, God would use this nation to come against this one or come against that one. But in, 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 in the passage that I, that I read to you, some, some think that this may have come from different things that happened in the Old Testament. But uh, Egypt was 
a superpower. When God's children were in bondage, Egypt was what we would call a superpower. No other country on earth could defeat Egypt at that time. There was nobody, nowhere around that could handle Egypt at that time. So God just took care of things by himself. Amen. The Lord strong in battle. The Lord mighty in battle. Why in the world would we even have something like that, Wes, in this Bible that we read? What that is, what that, that is in there, we know that no one can compare to God. We know that nobody can stand against God. We know that nobody is as powerful as God. So God had to put this in the Bible so that you and I would have some way to grasp what He really is. So in our physical bodies, we had to have some, we had to put it in, God had to put it in a way so that you and I can really understand what He's trying to say. Now listen. The children of Israel in bondage, 400 years in Egypt. Nobody could free them. No, no other nation in the world could come against Egypt and free them. So God just stepped up. We know that God had a man, Moses, and we know that Moses had a brother, Aaron. And we know that God told Moses to go to Pharaoh, and God, God gave Pharaoh warning. Amen. God gave Pharaoh warning. This is going to happen. Let my people go. Pharaoh said, no, we're not letting nobody go. So the Bible says in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, Thou shalt say to Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord Israel, Is my son even my firstborn? And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son even thy firstborn. He told Pharaoh, You can bully other nations. You can do this. You can do that. But you're not. You messing around with my children now. You're messing around with my kids now. This is, you're not fighting slaves now. You're messing with the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Exodus chapter 8 verse 2. I will smite all the lords with frogs. Exodus the chapter 8 verse 6 says, and the frogs came. That's right. You're dealing with God now. Come on, preacher. Exodus chapter 8 verse 16, smite the dust of the land, then it may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. Verse 17 says, Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became his lies in man and in beast. You're dealing with God now. You ain't dealing with slaves. Exodus chapter 8 verse 21 says this, I will send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy service and upon thy people. Verse 24 says, and there came a grievous swarm of flies even to the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses. Exodus chapter 9 verse 3, that shall be a, a very grievous moran. And the, chapter 9 verse 6, and the Lord did that thing on the morrow and all the cattle of Egypt died, but the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. You're dealing with God now. Amen. Amen. You got to understand some folks. Now I'm talking about the one that you and I are supposed to fear. We're dealing with God. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 9 verse 8, Take you two handfuls of ashes of the furnace. Verse 10 says, And Moses sprinkled it toward heaven, and it came a ball breaking forth on the plains upon man and upon beast. Exodus chapter 9 verse 14, For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart, and upon thy service, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. You're dealing with God now. Verse 18 said, Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hell, such as not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. You're dealing with God. Verse 20, verse chapter 9, verse 23 said this, And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hell, and the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hell down upon the land of Egypt, so that there was hell and fire mingled with hell, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hell smote throughout all the land of Egypt, and all, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hell smote every herb of the tree of the field, and break every tree of the field. Exodus chapter 10 verse 4 says, Tomorrow I will bring locusts upon thy coast. He hadn't got the picture yet. You're dealing with God. Hold on, I'm going somewhere. Come on, Verse 13 says, And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt.
Egypt. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt, for they were covering the face of the whole earth. Exodus chapter 10 says this, And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Guess what? Where the children of Israel were, it wasn't dark. You're dealing with God now. Chapter 11, verse 4 says this, Moses said, Thus saith the Lord about midnight, I will glide in the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. Right. He told him up front what was going to happen, Brother Wayne. He told him. Listen, I've been preaching for the last several weeks. <coughs> Brother Bill got up. Jesus is coming. Amen. Jesus is coming. And, and, and people are going along their lives. No, but you're dealing with God now. You ain't dealing with preachers. You're not dealing with demons. You're dealing with God. Verse 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh rose up in the night and said, Rise up, get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go and serve the Lord as ye have said. You cannot fight God. I don't understand that. How, how in the world can we think we fight God? Romans chapter 8 verse 31. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing that God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 20 verse uh, 15. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God. Somebody in this building tonight is facing something. You're facing a hard time. You're facing a troubled time. And you're wondering if God's really going to be there. I'm telling you right now, if you're on God's side, God will be there. Amen. Maybe you're facing a sickness tonight. Maybe you're facing a financial burden tonight. Maybe you're facing the loss of a, uh, of a loved one or the loss of a job. I'm telling you right now, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Come on. I, come on. Just a few months ago or just a few services ago, a uh, uh, bear stood up and, and talked about how that God had brought them through one of the hardest troubles of their life. I'm telling you, Bear, when you was going through it, you didn't see a way out of it. But now as you back off and look and see what God had done, God brought you through it. Every one of us in here has got a testimony about how God brought us through. God brought us through. God brought us through. And I'm telling you right now, He'll bring you through whatever you're facing tonight. Amen. Now, I'm not going to preach very long tonight. All that was the introduction. <laughs> you see what you what happens when you get God riled up? The same God that fought for the children of Israel when they were in bondage is the same God that fights for me. Amen. Amen. I'm just telling you, uh, if, if, if it takes God using the, the, the blood and the frogs and the lice and the wild beasts and the plagues and the bulls and the locusts and darkness and, 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 and the killing of the if it takes God doing all that, I'm telling you, it's the same God that was fighting for them. It's the same God that fights for me. He can still use whatever means necessary. My God is still in control of the weather. My God is still in control of the economy. My God is still in control of the voting system. My God, I was telling I was teaching the Bible Institute this past uh, uh, Monday night, and one day you can't careful when you start studying the book of Revelation. You think that the devil's got all this power, and you think that the devil's in control of everything. Right on up to the very end, Brother Terry, God's still in control of every last thing that ever happens on this earth. It don't matter. You might not think that you might think God has removed his hand, but God is still in control of everything. You gotta understand something. Like I said, I almost, bro, I almost entitled this weapons of mass destruction. God can use frogs and wipe out a nation. 
God can use locusts and wipe out a nation. Listen, if you go back and, 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 and do some studying, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was the, the six-day war of, of, of Jerusalem, of, of Israel, and, and back in the late 60s, there was, a, there was a unit, Sandy, of tanks that were coming against Israel. And they, this, this commander of this tank, they, they pulled up to this one position, and I don't remember the whole story, and they looked out. And, and honestly, what happened was there was two Israeli tanks, Brother Jerry, that was there to defend that place, coming against a whole battalion of tanks. The enemy pulled up and stopped and sat there and retreated. This is a true story. Somebody asked him later on what happened. He said they could not go up against that many tanks. In reality, there was only two. But you see, I, my God's in control of everything. My God's in control of the atmosphere. Amen. Amen. And you might not have only two tanks on your side. And I'm telling you right now, when the enemy looks at you, all, all he sees is tanks everywhere. Yes. That's how my God operates, amen? Understand something. A little over 2,000 years ago, God looked out and God knew and God saw that there was an enemy that needed to be defeated. And this enemy was not going to be defeated with frogs. This enemy was not going to be defeated with locusts. This enemy was not going to be defeated with killing the firstborn because he likes all that. This enemy is Satan. Yeah. He was coming against the human race. And a little over 2,000 years ago, God unleashed the most powerful weapon known to mankind. Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, born in a little town of Bethlehem. Jesus Christ that grew, up, that grew up and lived a sinless life and did everything right and died on that cross. And I'm telling you, on that cross, the devil tried to, to destroy him. And the devil was the one that put him up there, Wes. But God allowed that. And the devil was the one that beat him. And it was our sins he was, he was taking. But understand something. When that first drop of blood came out. Oh, Amen. I told you before, that's the most powerful weapon known to mankind, the blood of Jesus. Hey, he spilled it over 2,000 years ago, and it's still as strong today as it's ever been, glory to God. I'm telling you right now, if you'd have had an atomic weapon 2,000 years ago, it'd have rusted to death by now, and it wouldn't have been no good. But the blood of Jesus is still moving. It's still healing. It's still saving. It's still taking care of business. Amen. See, God knew we needed it. God knew we needed it. When those other weapons don't work, let me tell you something. When all these things, you, you try to sing Amazing Grace and Amazing Grace don't work. I've been there. You try, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. But Tony, there have been times that I've quoted scripture. And that didn't work. But there ain't never been a time, Brother Bill, that I got on an altar and I pleaded the blood. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, you start talking about the blood, that, that'll get every enemy on the run, amen? Yeah. The devil don't care if you can quote John 3, 16. You start quoting them damn scriptures about the blood. The devil don't care how, how educated you are, but you start talking to him about the blood. That's what gets him on the run. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, 9, for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ, glory to God, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. We hear testimony all the time about how, oh, the devil had me, the devil had me, the devil had me. I look at it, people, and I see people that I know, I know your testimony. The devil had you. And you know, I'm telling you, you tried AA didn't work. Turning over a new leaf didn't work. But when the blood of Jesus come on the scene, amen. Amen. business picked up, amen. amen. Yes. But for the blood. Amen. Now listen. Paul called it, calls it purchasing blood in Acts chapter 20. The redeeming blood in Ephesians chapter 1. <laughs> The shedding of his blood would be the very price for our salvation. Therefore, it is also the justifying blood, Romans chapter 5, verse 9. 
It's the peacemaking blood, Colossians chapter 1, verse 20. Its sufficiency does not end with our salvation, however, for it, for it is also the sanctifying blood in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. This is infinite internal power of the blood of Christ, for it is the blood of the everlasting covenant in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. It's an everlasting blood. It will never run dry. It will never stop. Jesus said, this is my blood in the New Testament, which is shed for the many for remission of sin. In other words, but for the blood that Robert got saved by, I got saved by. Amen. Brother Bill, Brother Terry, Bear, Wes, Kayla, Whip, we all had to come the same way. That's right. And understand how powerful it is. Think about how far down in the depths of sin you were. When the blood caught you. Amen. We've heard, I've heard Brother Bill stand up and testify about before he got saved. I've heard Sandy talk about before he got saved. I've heard talk, talk to Wes some about before he got saved. I talked to Bear some about before he got saved. Think about how far you were. Mama and Daddy couldn't bring you up. Oh, Mama and Daddy prayed. But Mama and Daddy couldn't do it. But when Jesus reached down, Amen. come on. When he reached down his hand for me, when he reached way down for me, I was lost and undone without my God. Down his hand for me. Amen. 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 But for the blood. I want to encourage you tonight. Listen, I know times is hard. I know tough. I know we all go through things. And I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we can come to church. And, and you said in Sunday school, and Brother Wayne teaches Sunday school, and Brother Wayne says something or brings the scripture out, and, and God just pops you in it, and it helps. Or sometimes you, you come to the church, and you sit through Sunday school, and, and the choir singing a song, and, 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 and something in that song just, just helps you. Or maybe it's the sermon, Brother Terry. Maybe, maybe you sit there and, 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 and if somebody gets up and, and preaches a message and, and God got it right on time. God got it right on time. That's what you need. Amen. Glory to God. But every once in a while, I'm just going to be honest with you. You're going to have to get down in the back part of your house. You got to get back in a bedroom somewhere or a closet somewhere, and you ain't got to tell nobody else about what's going on. You ain't got to talk to the preacher. You ain't got to talk to nobody else. You just got to get down on your knees and say, Lord, this is me, and you know what I'm going through. And God, I just need your touch, and I'm not getting out of here until I can feel that touch. I'm taking the same blood that saved you will show up at your house, glory to God. I'm taking the same blood that healed you will show up at your house, and it'll still be there for you. No matter what you're going through tonight, you still got the most powerful weapon known to mankind. Amen. And it comes from God Himself. Brother Robert, y'all come get us. I don't know. I don't know who's here tonight that's going through something. But I just really feel it in my heart. And it might not be big to nobody else, but it might be big to you. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and mighty. How many of us need God in your battle? I know God is helping Scott. I ain't a doubt in my mind that God's at Scott's house. I know that, Wes. The preacher, I, I'm, I'm in a battle. I'm in a battle tonight. Might not be, might not be nothing like what, what Scott's going through. But I'm in a battle tonight. And I need God to show up for me and fight for me. He will. God will love you. 
Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, God, for your blessings. And, Lord, I pray right now, Lord, you just encourage your people. People need help, God. Maybe somebody here tonight just got marital problems. Lord, I don't know. Maybe somebody here tonight's got a physical problem. Maybe somebody here tonight's just got a family problem. God, I don't know. I don't know, Lord, but I know you do. 